All right, he is the number one mandatory for the WBA middleweight championship of the world. And look, we thought maybe this thing ain't actually going to happen, but it's locked in and he's here to talk about it. Michael Zarafa, welcome to the Punch Podcast. Thanks, brother. It's good to be back. It's good to see you on a fight card that's actually going to happen. How does that feel? Oh, mate, I was losing hope as well. It was um, it was a long time coming, but look, I, I was promised. And, and um, uh, 13 months later, we officially got it over the line. So March 30, here we come. WBA world title. Promises in boxing not always uh, come through. <laughs> was there, was there a time in your life where uh, you might have thought, oh, well, I might be breaking this? Oh, 100%. You know, there was times I wake up in the morning and I was like, why am I even bothering? Um, you know, because... It was just promise after promise and, you know, next month after next month. And it was hard, you know, because I was in the gym doing, you know, everything as, as normal, you know, two sessions, three sessions a day. Um, yeah, it, mentally it was, it was tough, but we're here. Like I said, we got it over the line and, you know, grateful 2024 was going to be um, a big year. All right. Well, let's step through some of this because it has been around about 13 months in the making. Like you said, I last spoke to you November 22. So it's been some time. And uh, great looking great, still fit. Good to see. <laughs> <laughs> I try, brother. I try. I'm getting older, so I've got to put in more work. Yeah. Well, our last conversations were even the potential for Triple G. Falcao was on the cards and there was all this stuff happening. What's happened since then? I guess if you can sort of step us through some timelines. Um, so basically not much really. I had I was IBF mandatory um, and, you know, the Falcao fight fell through because the offer was just absolutely – it was um, disrespectful almost. Um, you know, they offered me absolutely peanuts to go to Brazil and, and fight their champion. Um, you know, but I was also the mentor of the WBA, so I had to make up a decision. And obviously I looked at the list and the names that were in the IBF to compare to the WBA. You know, the WBA just seemed the, um, the bigger route to take. So we went down that path not knowing that it was going to take 13 months. Um, you know, so it kind of bit me, bit me in the ass a little bit. But... Again, that's boxing. Again, nothing's promised until you're in that ring. And uh, contracts are officially signed now, and we're ready to roll, man. Like I'm, I'm excited, but um, not much besides just training and and laying low, really, and just building on on what we uh what we need to build on. So the fight was there with Eris Landy Lara. Then all of a sudden, they're like, just sort of sit one out for a sec, bro. We want to put Danny Garcia in. And then there was that Shit. conversation, and I guess that literally you know, another promise that didn't happen and whatever else there. So you've had to go through this a few times. How did that feel when that one came up? Yeah, it sucked. Look, you know, they, before I became mandatory, they, they rang me and that's why I was never, there was never a step aside fee or anything. It was just, they told me, look, we understand that you're the mandatory and we respect that, but prior to becoming the mandatory, we had, um, you know, the Garcia Lara fight in motions and, you know, verbally agreed and whatnot. And, um, you know, we will we'll give you the opportunity as soon as that fight's done. And, I couldn't really say much, you know, it was, you know, it was kind of like just shut up Mick and, and wait your turn, you know, you're the mandatory, but you're not the world champion. So I didn't really have much of a leg to stand on. I mean, I could have made it a lot harder and then I would have had to have gone through a legal battle and whatnot. So, and because I said, look, it's happening in two or three months. I was like, oh, well, I've just become mandatory. Yeah, sweet. Have your fight. Um, You know, I'll get the winner out of Lara Garcia on a bigger card and it was all going to benefit me in the long run. So I was like, yeah, no worries. You know, I was just happy to be in the position I was in, but Again, you know, Garcia was making it hard and then PPC didn't have the show and then oh, it was just a nightmare. And again, it is what it is. I mean, it was out of my control. Um, you know, people thinking I was just not fighting because I didn't want to fight. It was not the case at all. Um, I was, I mean, I was, again, it bit me in the ass because I, I turned down the IBF because it was such a shit offer knowing that the WBA offer was going to be so much bigger. Um, but then again, it, it turned against me because the wait was just so long. Was there times where you thought I'll take a fight in between or was it just, I'm just sitting on this mandatory and I ain't moving? I couldn't. I couldn't. That was the thing. I tried so many times. I was in, in you know, emailing PBC and stuff and because I had a two fight contract and I had to fight wherever the Lara Garcia fight was. That was my keep busy fight. So it was never, I was not going to not fight. It was while Lara and Garcia fight and I fight the winner, I was also going to fight on that card when they fought as my keep busy fight. But again, I couldn't do that because the fight never happened and that was in contract. Does it feel a bit hard when you're sitting there and you know, like, obviously that's a long period out of a peak of career. I guess you're looking going, come on guys. Like it was so bad, man. Like a whole year of just, you know, a waste really, you know, not, 
financially making the big bucks and, you know, not being in, in the ring and, you know, but because I'm a hard worker and I am, you know, a big believer in, in what will be, will be, um, you know, I just, I never, I never took a day off. I was literally training as if I was fighting for the world title, you know, because not only that, like people say, oh, you know, a year of just training for no reason. I, I was always promised. It was, it was June. Oh, sorry, not June. It's July. Oh, look, you know, it's definitely August. It's not August. Oh, it's September. You know, it just kept going month after month. So for me, I was always, you know, mentally, because it was like, oh, all right, well, next month it's on, you know, and there was talks about it and, yep, back and forth. Yep, we're on, we're on. Oh, look, you know, unfortunately, because of this, because of that. So it was, a, look, it was a huge fuck around. But again, at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason. And this was the reason. I think the best bit is, like you just said there, you've actually got the fight. So many times we see this happen to fighters and then all of a sudden you've got a world champ from the weight class below stepping up and it just gets gifted the opportunity as it happens. Correct. And then then you're done again after waiting a year. So like there's like, I honestly didn't think that they might've got you over the line. So to hold on for that long and still believe and still to get it, that that's a, uh, that's, that's a, that's a Rocky pillow for a year. hundred <laughs> percent. I've been praised that much on, on, on the weight that I had to do. And um, a lot of people said, man, like a lot of fighters would have just given up. Um, you know, like there was even talks that Shakur Stevenson just retired because of the WBO, not granting him his world title or something like that. So, um, you know, what look, it was hard. I'm not gonna say it was easy because you know, thirteen months is a long time. And um especially when there's nothing wrong with me, you know, in terms of like I was I was injury free, I was fit, ready to go. Um, you know, I was sparring for the sake of just keeping bring you know, the ring rust out. But I mean again, thirteen months it's gone now and on to bigger and better things and March thirty, like I said, win, lose or draw, it's gonna be the best version of Mox Rafa, but I'm super confident. Um, you know, in the gym, I'm flying at the moment. Let's Probably too well. That card because yeah, well, that's a good sign. I love it because yeah. when I saw that come out, I was like, this card's just getting awesome. And then all of a sudden we've got two Aussies on there and one of those we'll get to in a sec for those waiting around. Uh, but we will, we will talk about that. But for you, it's an exciting time. You're on a Vegas card on pay-per-view, Amazon Prime launch. Like realistically, if you're going to wait, this is the one to be on. Yeah, exactly. Huge T-Mobile. Like doesn't get much bigger than this. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm grateful and everything does happen for a reason. And again, the, you know, looking back now, it's like, oh, 13 months, it flew, but it didn't, it was, it was very, very hard. And um, again, especially because there was nothing wrong with me and I uh, always, you know, empty promises and nothing delivered and, you know, yes, no, yes, no. And maybe, oh, no, Garcia, Lara. And it was just, it was a nightmare. Not only that, because I turned down the IBF um, yeah, because it was absolutely pathetic. Like they were saying, like, man, we'll give you like 30 grand to go to Brazil and fight the world champion and you can't do this. And I was like, well, hang on a second. I so, said, you know, I got the WBA because I was a mentor for that too. So I was in a great position being, you know, the mentor for both. Mm. And then I had to obviously choose because you can't be, you know, mentor for both at the same time and fight for the same title. So I had to literally choose. And at the time, you know, Golovkin was there and there was, you know, Eubank was in there and there was, there was bigger names where uh, the IBF, it was just Falcoa and, and guys behind me that weren't really um, big name. So for me, it was just the smarter option to fight the bigger fights and, um, you know, in, in, in the bigger stadium. And that's now you know, Lara. Yeah. He's, he's not, you know, the Lara that fought Canelo, but, and, you know, he's, he's, he's stepped up every fight and he's looking, he's still sharp. You know, he hasn't been in wars and, um, you know, he's, he's a skillful, skillful fighter. He uses the ring great, um, and sets up all his shots. And he's also the Lara that holds a world title belt right now and you want it. Correct. <laughs> I mean, That's right. he's, he's got my belt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How great. You're going to roll over there. You're going to fight a, a world champ on in Vegas on a massive card. And and what's the road look out from now to fight night? What happens now? Well, I'm assuming you've got to, obviously you've probably been in camp for 13 months, but I'm assuming it's going to ramp up and you'll fly out and you'll, uh, and you, and you'll take it on. Where, 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 how's it roll from here? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm flying at the moment. Like I said, I'm only two and a half kilos off weight, you know, so I'm probably in a, a position where I'm a little bit too early, you know, peaking. I'm peaking at the moment now, but, you know, we, we'll stay here for another week and a half, two weeks, um, and then we'll jet over to, to Vegas and train with my team over there. I'm with Nonito Denaire and, and the crew down there at um, DLX in Vegas, and um, they've got big names down there. And, uh, yeah, man, like I said, I'll, I'm excited to get in, 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 the, in the gym there and, and putting out all the work and, and just learning and adapting and, and then going out there in such a huge show, um, and the first one too on, on Amazon Prime and uh, PBC, 
Um, you know, it doesn't get it doesn't get much bigger than this, you know. And and for me, like I said, starting off in a in a roller batting center in Sunshine to now T Mobile on a huge card. Um and, and you know, I get to do it with my best mate, uh Timmy. <laughs> but it's um look, you know, it's great. It's great for the sport. Um, you know, I'm not gonna take anything away from from him and, and we we have our back and forth and whatnot, but it's uh it's going to be a good night, and uh, and hopefully we both bring it back. So run me through this. You know you're fighting in Vegas, Eris Landy Lara, WBA belt. At what stage did you find out it's on the undercard of Tim Zoo, Keith Thurman? <laughs> Probably about 48 hours ago. When when was it announced? I literally, <laughs> I was I was driving home, and I'm like, surely not. So I was like, but you know what? I'm actually I'm actually grateful, um, yeah. because you know. It's it's a huge card, and um, you know when even in the media it gives us both a different kind of outlook of each other. I mean, you know, there's that competitiveness, and everyone thinks that we hate each other. And look, I don't, I don't got nothing personal against Zoo. He's done nothing to me. His dad's an absolute legend, but it's that competitiveness, and obviously for the sport, he thinks he's the best. So I think I'm the best, and that's just where we clash. But um, to now be involved where we're not bagging each other, you know, we drop those one or two lines, obviously, with each other, but. Um, you know, even in the media, they're getting behind us like two Aussies, you know, fighting for world titles. And, um, you know, I'm on the card. I think I'm the second or third fight, which is good. So I get in there, get my belt. I can kick back and watch Timmy do his thing. And like I said, it just builds for a bigger fight. You know, if I win, I'll be a world champion. He's a world champion. And um, the fight will happen eventually. But again, I've got nothing against him. He's he's in a tough fight. You know, he's fighting Thurman, who uh, a few years ago was an absolute killer. But I think Timmy gets over the line. I think I get over the line. And yeah. Like I said, fight will happen eventually, but again, time will tell. So we can officially go on the record and say in Vegas, you will be supporting Tim Zoo. Yeah, look, <laughs> yeah. I mean, people are going to be like, oh, this is this is crazy. But look, I mean, yeah, again, when we're fighting each other, I'm obviously not going to support him. Oh, yeah. I want myself to win. But yeah. um, against anyone else um, outside of Australia, we're Aussies. You know, at the end of the day, despite our differences, you know, he's an Aussie, I'm an Aussie. You, you know, you don't want an American to win. Um that's just that's just common sense, but um, doesn't mean we uh, we're friends. It doesn't mean that we um, you know are reading the same book. We just have to stick to each other. We've got to stick together in this one because we're uh, on a on a big card and on you know on a big show. Then you a chance of putting your middleweight belt on the line for Timmy to step up and just have a, uh, a high hometown showdown. Hundred percent. I'm more than happy to do that. I've said that you know numerous times on other podcasts and other media outlets. I said, look, if I win, God willing. It all goes well. Um, you know, Tim Zhu, if you he's talking about coming to middleweight, um, I'm more than happy to um go back and do our unfinished business on what we what we had started and um and uh, yeah, put the belt on the line. How's everything been going? Obviously you've got new management now. And do you would you say that's been a big part of getting this fight? Because I have seen you online probably hustling at a few conventions and stuff like that. So you've been shaking yeah, yeah. with some babies and doing all the right things to, to yeah, now to play into that fight. Sport, you, know yourself, you have to sell yourself in this sport. And um, it's been, it's been, look, you know, I, I believe me and my, me and my partner and, 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 um, Anito Denaire and Rach Denaire and, um, you know, we, we just been literally hustling the world, you know, we went out there and, um, you know, talking to the right people and, and shaking the right hands and, um, you know, just learning from the guys that have been there and done it. And, and that's how you grow. Um, you know, I think self-managing is the best thing to do. And anyone out there, I think that's the best, you know, the best advice to give is, you know, you don't need these guys taking phone calls and running around for you. You can, you can do it on your own because no one's going to have your, you know, your best interest as, you know, yourself or, you know, your partner. So um, for me, I think that's a, that was a huge lesson. And um, yeah, like I said, we'll just hustle it, man. Like, it was yeah, handshake after handshake, introduction after introduction, and uh, now we're here. Speaking of, I saw you met uh, Volk and Tom Brady the other day. How was that? Yeah, well, look, me and Volk are good <laughs> mates. I've actually known Volk for a while now, and he's an absolute a champion. And um, you know, he he always checks in and, and gives me words of wisdom. And you know, he's going to be there when I fight in um, in Vegas. He's already said um, the other night he goes, "I'll be there, man." So I've got him a ticket lined up for me, and. Um, you know, great to have a friendship with him and and Tom Brady was you know after the after the uh, the talk I wanted to just spar somebody it was just uh, <laughs> a huge pump up and it's great to go there yeah it was huge man I was front row and I was ready to like throw an overhand at someone just because it was just such a such a pump up but um I was grateful to be you know obviously front row hearing another top athlete um you know in in Tom Brady and bulk 
I mean, if you've ever thought Volk's got ice in his veins, wait till Tom Brady tells him to go long. I mean, that, 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 that'll, that'll rattle oh, anyone, but no, did it. It was crazy. Even just the way he throws the ball, like so much power and, you know, like I throw it and I'll get a little bit of a spin and I'm wrapped just to see how he was throwing like 50 metres, you know, around the room. It was just phenomenal. Like it was crazy. Yeah, that's amazing. And look, we look just we look forward to seeing you throw Erislandy Lara around the room and uh holding up a belt <laughs> and uh being 100%. a champion. That's like gotta be the sweetest thing out of all of this, obviously, all the drama that's gone on with you and Tim and the sport and the waiting and just everything to hold a physical belt at the end of all that. Like I mean, that's pretty and it'll be uh it'll be the best comeback story, I think, ever in the sport in Australia. Um, to, to have, you know, everyone against me. But I think people are starting to understand. And, and, you know, at the time that I've been away, I think people have actually realised that, you know, because obviously I've worked with No Limit again and, you know, even in this fight we had to deal with PBC No Limit and, you know, our team's talk and whatnot. And people starting to realise that what was actually – what actually happened and, you know, wasn't wasn't me. And um, the more time, time heals everything and, and obviously the truth comes out and, um, I'm in a good place now, man, like I said. And, and you're never going to – you're always going to get, oh, he ran and this and that. People can think what they want and, and you're never going to make everyone happy. But at the end of the day, I know what happened and where I'm at. It's coming. So, yeah, bigger and better things. But I said it's in God's hands now and I'm just grateful to, you know, be given the opportunity and, and um, yeah, like I said, bring it home. All right. Well, before we go, let's just rip through a few of these real quickly. It's just who's going to win and why. Tim Zhu, Keith Thurman. Uh, I think Tim Zhu. I think he's he's, he's – too strong, uh, too fresh. I think Keith Thurman's on uh, old legs now, and yeah, I think Tim Zoo Tim Zoo walks through. George Cambosis, Loma, huge fight. I'm a I'm a big Cambosis, you know, fan, and uh, we're good mates. But um, yeah, I think he, I think you know he's underestimated. Um, I think he's going to come out, and and, and Loma's going to do his his thing, and he's an absolute phenomenal boxer. But I think Cambosis is hard. We'll get him over the line. I'm I'm in his corner, and I think I think he can upset. You can upset him because, like I said, Tiafomo beat Loma and and Cambosis beat Tiafomo. I mean, styles make fights, and and Cambosis is tough. So I'm uh, I'm in Cambosis' corner, and, and I hope he brings it home. I'm with you on that one. And just finally, well, just one you might have an opinion on, um, Eris Landy Lara, Michael Zarafa. Oh, that's a tough <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> look, you know, I think I think myself, I think I'm going to um, I'm going to upset him. I think he's going to underestimate my power. My, uh, my physical size and my timing. A lot of fighters that get in there with me, they watch me from the outside, they, they have a different opinion and uh, I think he's going to have the same. So I'm uh, I'm predicting a huge, huge statement March 30. Good stuff. Well, we look forward March 31 here in Australia, 30 around the world, Amazon Prime. I've seen some KO logos and all that other stuff on the on the flyer. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of places to watch this fight. It's Easter long weekend. So, I mean, everyone's off. We can have a mad Monday for your world title. There we go. Drink up. Hundred percent of a one for me, guys. If you're tuning in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Zarafa, thanks uh, for hanging out. It's always a pleasure to get you on. And next time we talk, you'll be a world champion, and that's that's going to be the best bit about this. I appreciate it, brother. Thanks, Steve, mate. Much respect.